Okay. So one of the things I want to first talk to you about is about weekly and daily planning. And um, Tom, I think this could be a huge help for you to make sure that you balance kind of your, for lack of a better word, because I don't know if they're her idea, but your honeydews with your work and networking and also um, moving from networking to sales and converting new leads into actual business. Because it's like you have these pieces of the puzzle and they're just not quite connected, but you've got more pieces than you did when you started. So you're getting there. And Jen, I think even you to a certain extent, um, it's just a matter of getting that a little bit more fluid consistency. Yeah, I would agree. I think both of you are like doing a lot right, a lot more right. And it's just a matter of making sure it's like consistent and fluid. And, and I go up and down too. Okay. So I'm totally um, preaching to the choir here, but um, it's one of those things that we just, if we just keep working on it, it can become a habit and then it just doesn't feel so exhausting to work your business. Okay. So it's just a matter of getting over that hump. So with regards to weekly and daily planning, this is kind of some of my suggestions on this. I heard a gal talk about weekly planning and how important it was that you sit down before your week and plan out your week. And one of the things I'd really like you to do is make sure that you have a list of things that need to be accomplished and certain goals for the week. So you know how many, you want to start with how much money you want to make. What do you want to do with that money? How much do you want to make? Based on that, that means you need to have this many new customers or this many parties. If it's a group event, how many people need to be there at that event? Which means how many phone calls do you need to make to previous customers? And if you need to meet new customers, how many networking events do you need to be in? How many phone calls do you need to make? Okay, you need to start with the goal and break it down this way because when you know, I'll see, um, you know, like very, very beginning of our class period, Miss Elizabeth had this huge goal to accomp to get this the trip, which I'm all for. I love earning the trips with companies, and I still remember getting texts from her saying, you know, I'm going to make 500 phone calls in the next, I don't know, it was seven or ten days or something. And I I knew first of all, like if she was doing them right, she didn't need to make. 500 phone calls to accomplish her goal. That's just first off. Second of all, I knew she only had so much time and I knew how much she loved being on the phone. And, and the thing is she needed to start with, here's the goal. And she kind of did. She knew how many parties or how much of sales she needed to do, but then she just assumed it would take 500 phone calls and she didn't put the building blocks in between. And that's what I want you to do every week, figure out what you need to do. And the thing is, Tom, one of the things like you're starting to really love the activity of networking and see the benefit of that. But sometimes we can get to a point where I, I'm serious. Like if you saw my desk over here, I have stacks of like cards and catalogs and all this information from people I've met that I need to follow up with. My time being spent networking is not where I need to be. I need to be on the phone and putting all these contacts in my contact management system is where I need to spend my time right now because I've networked and networked and networked and it's time to do some follow-up. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. It's important that you start to, it's just being cognitive of where you're at and what you have and do I have plenty of leads? Well, then I need to stop networking. And networking is just a little bit safer because it's just a, uh, can we just meet up? Whereas, you know, can I sell you something? Which isn't how I say it, you know, that's not how I see it, but <laughs> that that's the part that's not as fun for us. So sometimes we'll kind of avoid it by networking and that's a way to be creatively busy if we have plenty of contacts. So I would guess, uh, could be wrong, but where Jen and um, Elizabeth just did a ton of booths and a ton of expos. They probably have plenty of names for months. And from those, if they do their parties right, they should book from those parties and book from those parties. In theory, they don't need to be doing any new networking for a while would be my guess. 
based on what I believe they did at their expos, okay? So that's where you decide, am I doing things that are income producing? Networking is not income producing, okay? You can be meeting with new people and quite frankly asking for referrals, networking, meaning building your list of new perspectives at the same time and not networking ever again if you really want to get good at it and smart at it, okay? I believe it is good to network to a certain extent, but I believe it's more important to be on the phone and taking care of the leads that you do have. And when you take care of them well, you can also get referrals from them. So that's something that you want to look at when you're putting in your week, but you've got to define your goals to really do that well. Okay, Tom? So I want you to start deciding exactly how much sales you need. And if you have leads, do I really need to network this week? So making those decisions so that you can get to the, I'm making money. I mean, it feels so good when you get to the point where you have plenty of names and you're caught, like your day is spent making phone calls, booking appointments, doing sales, um, upselling, follow up, reorders, all those things. And you're actually making money instead of you doing activities that you hope will eventually make money. Right. That kind of hump, okay? And it feels right. amazing to get over that hump. And you're this close, Tom. You're this close, okay? We just need to, those questions are great. You just gotta connect what they need with your product and turn that over and just be confident about it and just say it. And I know there's like this, you're confident about questions getting to know you and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna talk about my coffee and then that means I'm asking them to do something for me that involves my goal. And it's not totally conscious, but it's like, I'm not allowed to accomplish my goals. I bet I am, but I'm not. And, and you're fighting that. And I see you're fighting through that. And you're going to get over the hump. You just got to keep doing it. Just keep going, Tom. Okay? It's getting there. Oh, yeah. All right. So with weekly planning, one of the things I suggest, I like to do it about a day and a half before my week starts. Um, for me, my week starts on Monday, but I try really hard not to do a lot of work on Sunday. Like I. I don't make phone calls, sometimes an email or a Facebook message or something. And then, um, so really the day before my Monday is Saturday, so I need to do my planning on Friday. So if there's something I need for Monday, I have time to do it on Saturday. Okay? So, you know, whether something needs to be purchased, an email needs to be sent, a phone call needs to make, be made, I'm prepping for that. On daily planning, well, okay, so with the weekly planning, if you're someone who's a variety person, if you remember those questions, if you're a variety person, the great thing is you can have a list of what you need to do every week. And based on that list, if you're a variety person, you can put it in in different days of the week. You don't have to do it at the same time every week. If you're a consistency person, I would recommend you try to do it at the same time every week just because that's what makes you feel better. Um, Tom, I'm gonna guess you're a consistency person which makes this whole one day I'm doing honeydews, another day I'm networking, and in this whole like limbo thing, and I'm self-employed, and when do I do what? I'm gonna guess yeah. that kind of messes you up mentally just a little bit. I'm kind of a mix. Okay, um, I still see you. I think you like variety. In fact, with construction, I'm sure you aren't technically doing the same thing every day. You're in different parts of the project wasn't like every day you're hammering a nail in this one thing, you know, you had this. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, I like the variety, but then there's the consistency parts that need to be there also. Mm -hmm. Right. People show oh, up on time and right. consistent work. And so, you know, one of the things I'd suggest, Tom, is maybe you and your wife agree to you having business hours. Like these are your business hours no matter what. And then when a honeydew or firewood or something comes up, you have specific hours for those. And, you know, if you need to have so many daylight hours and so many evening hours, depending on the project and depending on your work, like maybe you, you set a schedule every week and maybe try it for four weeks. Just try it to see if it works for you. 
in that these are your work hours, which means, you know, Tuesdays at two, you're on the phone and Wednesday evenings, you're on the phone and your wife just knows she, you know, that's your work time. Just like if you were at your construction job, you wouldn't be coming home. Right. And then these are the times, you know, oh yes, I love to do projects around the house. I love to help you with things. These are the hours for that. And that way they're both getting done. So that might work for you mentally better than what you're doing now. So it's just an idea. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, one. That's a good one. Okay. All right. Do you want me to email your wife about that? <laughs> <laughs> See here. Follow up with Tom on this one. Try this. Okay. Daily planning is much the same way in the fact that I need to do it like if I do it the night before, first of all, I don't think as well at night as I do in the morning, okay? So I'm, I'm likely to forget something or feel overwhelmed or blow it off or, okay, versus if I do it in the morning. But I don't, doing it the day of, like, oh crap, I didn't email so-and-so, I didn't call so-and-so, shoot, and you're in the store. So I need to do it the morning before the morning, the 24 hours ahead. That's what works for me mentally, okay? Tuesday, I'm planning for Wednesday. Okay. Um, okay. So the other thing I would highly recommend, which I know has been up and down with all of you, but with your phone calling, I really would schedule out a one, two hour phone calling session and hold to that like you're holding to any appointment. You would not blow off another human being if you had a face to face appointment. That two hour phone calling session, like, Tell your spouse, tell your kids, get everybody on board. This is, you know, this is mommy working, honey, this is my working time. This is how I make money. Do you understand? Being on the phone is how you make money, period. And it has to be scheduled in there fast. I mean, like, you would never cancel somebody's party unless you were dying, you know, like some major illness. But otherwise, you wouldn't cancel just because there was a show on and it just was more fun than being on the phone. Okay. Which I'm guilty of been there, done that. Okay. But it feels so good when you get disciplined and you make that choice. And when the kids know the timer goes off and that two hours up that you're back to being mommy mode, like you can train them. They'll, they'll get it. They'll get used to it. And I've even heard this doesn't count for you, Tom, but unless you have a box for your wife, but, um, I've heard some people even have a box of toys or activities that are mommy's to our phone calling box. And so this is the stuff that kids you get to play with. This is your special time, or maybe it's a movie, or maybe it's a certain channel on TV or something where this is the only time you get to do this because you're being so good and cooperative while I'm on the phone because this is what makes me money and I'm not putting you in daycare. So this is the happy medium. This is how we're making it work, okay? So that's something that you, that's kind of some ideas. But if when you get used to making that two-hour phone calling session and you make money at it, you make sales, repeat sales, and Tom, you know, I would love to see you get to the point where somebody who loves the coffee, you start turning them into a business builder and they start making that transition because they're in love with the coffee and those kind of things. That's what that two-hour phone calling session is about is about turning leads and turning current customers into repeat customers. It's all about making profit during those two hours, okay? You can do some hostess coaching, um, but it's about booking interviews, it's about selling, it's about repeat business. It's, and you get off the phone and I'd have like a tally, this is how many recruit interviews I have, this is how much I did in sales, this is how many bookings I have, and it would be such a high, okay? So keep track of it so you can see what amazing work you did in two hours. But I'm serious. If you will do this consistently, you'll be surprised how little time you have to spend on the phone if you'll do that block of time. And when you do that block of time, at the end, you will have had some yeses, okay? If you get on for 30 minutes, it's really easy to not get any yeses and go, I'm not going to do that again. Two hours, you will get some yeses. And you'll get off and you'll be okay with getting on again because it ended as a good experience. Okay? So really consider putting that hard fast in your schedule and see how things change. Okay. There's an order to who you're going to be contacting. So there's a sheet here. 
that you have in your workbook and it says current clients, potential clients with commitment to call and referrals. And I would even dare put like, um, yeah, referrals would be people that have no idea you're going to call them unless the person that you met said that, you know, call them and said, by the way, you're calling and they're expecting your phone call. So current clients, that would be people that have committed to booking parties. That would be clients to see how their product turned out, you know, calling and thanking them for having their party. How did it all work out? Um, if you know there's someone that needed to upsell or you're supposed to contact them because, you know, the stoneware was on sale and that's the month you're supposed to call and tell them, you know, oh, by the way, it's September, it's on sale, were you wanting something? All those kind of things. Those are current clients. And um, I would also put in there recruits. So recruits that you know you need to follow up with. Any current client, any current recruit, they are your first phone calls. They trump new potential business because it's easier to keep business than it is to get new business. So you want to take care of your current clients better than anyone else. Okay. The next group is those that you've already, that you've made a commitment to giving a call to and talking to. So whether you've met someone at a booth or expo or somebody is committed to booking a party and hasn't got it on the calendar or something like that, or you met them at a party and they're like, well, I need to go home and think about that. See what's in my kitchen. Okay. Let me call and follow up with you and see what, you know, you'd like to get anyone that you've made a commitment to call and then you have referrals. And so it's so important that you keep, take good care of the business that is on your calendar and that you have currently so that you can keep your current clients. And the thing is they will eventually give you referrals if you take really, really good care of them. Okay. So it's interesting because you have two different types of customers and both of you have kind of the opposite. So Jen, you have more of someone that you upsell to you do have a few consumables. You have your seasonings. And is there anything else? Do you have sauces? Is there anything else you would have that would be considered consumable? Oh, you're muted, honey. Okay. Um, we have the seasonings and oils, and then we have like. Um, uh, Beer bread, the crust, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, beer bread. I didn't know that. Okay. And Tom, yours is 100%. Well, do you have coffee presses or anything? Yours is consumable. Uh, it's all consumable. It's all consumable. Okay. So that's where you've got to be following up, um, Tom, especially because, like, I've heard little things from a couple people. Like, some people don't totally, haven't got quite a taste for the coffee yet. Or for those who say, you know, the weight loss isn't happening as fast as others or different things like that. Like you have got to follow up when people get the coffee to make sure that you can help them make those tweaks. Whether it's making tweaks to help them be healthy or tweaks to help them to enjoy their coffee the same way they were based on the coffee they were used to drinking. It's so important that I would follow up like day three after they've got their order, day seven, day 14, because I'm guessing there's like the whole idea is to get them set up for instant rebuy or, or what's well, yeah, we call it auto ship. Um, auto I, ship. I get them set up on that when they first buy it because it gives them their best price. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but still they can cancel their auto ship, right? Whenever they want. Yeah. Okay. So that's where um, I would be following up with your customers. Those would be the top thing top people that call on my list every week were brand new customers and customers that have been with you, you know, about three to five months just to make sure they're getting the results and they're, they can enjoy it in the way they want to enjoy it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So making sure you're keeping your, you know, giving really good customer service. And if you call and they are having challenges, one of the things that's real easy to get kind of nervous and like, oh, how do I fix this? Um, any Anything they say, anything, whether it's good or bad, a statement of just simply, hey, I understand. 
it doesn't matter what they're saying. It brings it down. Like if they're worried to tell you that they don't like it or something they just bought broke or for some reason they're having a struggle. Okay. Like for me, I don't think they even still have the exact same one, but do you remember the chopper from Pampered Chef? Do they still have that one or is it a little bit different? Um, anyway, like I'm just dingy. Like I can never, you know, match the blades up just perfect. And I don't, I'm like, I'm clean a knife faster than I can clean this thing. You know what I mean? Like it just didn't end up my favorite product in the end, except like when we're doing a ton of like onions for salsa or something like that. I'd much rather just chop one onion up with a knife and that to me is easier to clean than the big chopper and throwing three different pieces in the dishwasher, which I don't think I'm supposed to, which I think had something to do with then the blades not matching up later. I don't know. It just like, ah, that product just drives me crazy. Like it's not my favorite. I have a ton that are my favorite. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just an example. Okay. Um, I can tell you lots of things I love about other products. But when you have someone who might be frustrated with something, you know, we just want to say, I totally understand. Like, don't ever, I'm serious, it's so tempting to go, yeah, but have you done this? Yeah, but have you done that? Yeah, but, like, you cannot use those words. Do you understand? Because they yes. instantly don't feel heard and understood. I'm serious. It is a magic phrase. It brings them down and gets them to not be so uptight and defensive. If you just say, hey, I understand. And then you can say, can I, can I give you an idea? Um, it's, it's still, the typical response is, yeah, but have you put creamer in it? Have you tried a little bit of this? Has, you know, let me help, you know, so-and-so's done this and it worked for them. You just need to ask permission. Can I give you a few ideas? that some others have found have made it so they enjoyed the taste of it or made it so it was easier to use or made it so they had multiple ways to use it or place to store it or, you know, whatever it is. Okay. Um, I understand. May I give you an idea? Okay. Hang on to those two phrases because if there is a concern when you call, I mean, most of the time you're in a column and they're going to be thrilled. Okay, but you're going to have a couple times where somebody's not thrilled and luckily you called them. They would have just been fussing about it and never came back and bought more, canceled their auto ship. We didn't know why. Okay, but follow up and check in with them. And then if there is a concern, I understand. May I make a suggestion? When you do those two things, softens it. They're more receptive to you. They're not as defensive. Okay. So hang on to those two phrases for dear life. Um, okay, let me tell you a little bit about how to handle your calendar. For both of you, I've put this down here mostly with regards to hostesses, but I wouldn't just do it with hostesses. I'd also do it, have um, this type of calendar when you're at like a networking event and you're trying to book an opportunity to sit down and chat with somebody. So you've got, um, one of the things I highly suggest is people just have a very simple paper calendar just for their business. And it doesn't really keep track of your business for you. It's more of a way to just symbolistic show people when you're available. So you can get that calendar out. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to your main calendar You'll cross off the days you have available, and then you highlight the days in whatever your favorite color is, the ones that you have available. And that way you can just quickly go, just scan over and, hey, you said you have Tuesdays off? Let me see. I have Tuesday the 10th. How would that work for you? And it just makes it, you don't have to put it, what it is on the X day. Oh, I have a dentist appointment. I'm um, doing this family activity. You do not have to report to anybody what you're doing in your life. They just need to know when you're available so that they can book an appointment with you. And so having that paper calendar and having those things marked out, you kind of shake your head like that's probably something you already do, Jen. It helps a lot, huh? It, narr it really shrinks the time down to finding times to meet. Because when you're going through your kids' soccer games or you're going through family activities or when am I going to travel, like, you can't be thinking about your regular life. You just got to be thinking about your business life. And it just goes a little smoother when you do that. I, I think that was one of the best 
things I ever did for my business was to take control of my calendar and just cross off everything that was family and personal. Cause then it was so easy. Yeah. When I opened up my calendar at a show to say that they could see my dates and these are the only dates I have available. Right. And I knew what days I could work. It was the best thing. That's when my calendar started filling up too. Oh, good. It makes it more mentally easy for you. It's really interesting. Right. Things. Yep. Okay, so let's see. All right, so if you go to the back of this page, one of the things I have on here is scheduling out when you're going to do things, okay? Um, and keeping track of what you actually have happen when you're on the phone. So you have date and time, and that's really important to put down because as you keep track of how many dials you made, how many people answered, and then you wanna put the percentage because if you're under 50%, then you're gonna know that day and time is not the best time to continue using when you can keep track of your sales, your bookings, your recruit interviews, and what kind of hostess coaching you did, then it really gives you a solid idea of what you got accomplished while you're on the phone. And it motivates you to get back on the phone again because you can see how productive you were. Okay, so there's a nice thing for you to use. Um, okay, anybody that you follow up with, Okay, rather it is a recruit lead, a hostess, a new client, someone that you meet um, in the store, all of those. One of the things you need to make sure you do is that you're following up within 24 to 48 hours. That will make a huge difference on your turnaround and your closing rate. You've got to get them while they're still pretty excited. Okay. All right, let's see here. With regards to current team members, Jen, how many team members do you have? Oh, you're muted. On my personal team? Mm -hmm. um, on my personal team, I have, um, I think I'm down to like five or six right now. Five or six. That are active. And Tom, do you have team members right now? I had two. Both of them are dead. Dead. Okay. And Jen, what is your current schedule for following up with them? What is your current habit with follow up? With, sorry, <laughs> you were like cutting out. So. Oh, I'm sorry. What's that? What is your current habit with following up and training team members? Um, not very well. <laughs> no, no, it's no, it's not a when I call. sign I, somebody. Do you, I do you call them so often? Do you have team meetings? Like, what kind of things you're doing currently to uh, support your team? Not a judgment. <laughs> no, it's something I need to work on. So, um, when I first sign them, I follow up within 24 hours and, and stay in contact once a week. Um, we do have a monthly team meeting and then I do um, try to check in with those that are working in their business. I try to check in um, mid month. Okay. All right. So, and then we have, a, we have a team Facebook page. Okay. So we're constantly posting on that as well. Okay. So I know that you've tried, this is slightly off topic, but I know that you guys have tried that, you know, can I help you get comfortable with this? You know, on scale of one to 10, you know, give them a challenge on scale of one to 10. When would you like to do it? You know, can you follow up with me? Um, have you done that on a one-on-one -on -one basis or just in a group setting? Um, I've done it with a couple of mine on a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. And how has that worked? 
Um, well, for one gal, it seems to have helped a lot, but she's kind of a roller coaster. She goes up and down. So right. she's not very consistent. So what, one of the things that you can do to help her be consistent is to be 100% consistent with your follow-up with her. Um, and, it, and that's hard because you're trying to make so many of your own habits. It's not easy. I'm not going to say it like, ah, just do right. it. You know, like it's simple or something. This is not. But if you can get right. really consistent with following up with your people, they will make their habits faster. And that's the thing. I really want to kind of change the culture. Okay. People are like, oh, but I can't hold their hand on everything and walk through with everything. And I'm like, I'm not talking about making their hostess calls for them. I'm talking about committing them to when they're going to make their hostess calls. And then you're going to follow up and make sure they did it. Um, it's way different. Do you know what I mean? There's like such this attitude of, well, how many times do I do things for them before they finally figure out they can do it on their own? It, it honestly, 99% of the time is not a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of consistency and habit. And people technically know that, but they try to fix it with education. And, well, here, go watch this training or listen to this call or read this book or here, I'll tell you how to do it. Instead of, by the way, you don't have good habits. So let's change your habits. Okay. Does that make sense, Tom? It does. Okay. And it's something that for yourself and for those that you're working with, even people who aren't drinking coffee, let's say they get out of the habit of taking their coffee with them as they stop in at Starbucks or they drink the coffee in their office or something like that. You can find gentle ways to commit them to different things and such that their habits change. And when we totally realize that, that this isn't a character flaw for yourself or for them, that it's totally doable to make those changes and you just see it as, oh, you just haven't made this habit yet. Let's help you find the tools to do that. You are going to be so surprised what can happen. Okay? So use those tools to do that with that follow-up. How comfortable are you on a school? Well, here's your challenge. Comfortable, 1 to 10. I had a gal the other day. I asked, you know, how comfortable would you do this, 1 to 10? And she said, like, a 5 or 6. And I'm like, oh, well, she's not going to do that. So we talked a little bit more about the assignment and why and went back in her history and when have you done this and it made you feel, okay, now on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable? Oh, like an eight. I had a lot more hope that she was going to do it. If you do not ask them on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable they are with it, you're going to get frustrated going, they said they would, but they didn't. It really is a great measuring tool for figuring out what the odds of them doing the assignment is. Okay. So that helps a huge amount. Okay, let me see. So one of the things I'd highly recommend is just that you're scheduling in your calendar when you're going to do follow-up, okay? And you can also do follow-up with emails. You can do follow-up on the Facebook page. Just whatever you do, do everything you can to make it consistent, okay? that they can expect this email on this day or this information on the Facebook page this day or whatever it is. Just do everything you can to make it consistent. Okay. So we're, this is the last class of this series. Tell me what questions or thoughts you have, either what you've learned, what was the best thing that you learned, or tell me, you know, do you have a specific question, one thing that you would like to, that we've learned that you're like, Okay, how do I get this a little more set in stone? So either way, what would you like to chat about? We have about uh, about fifteen more minutes. Well, I think for myself, it's just been a good kick in the kick in the seat, <laughs> and and to realize that there is and it, it is okay. <laughs> what I was what I was fighting before. Mm -hmm. uh, because since we started this process, um, there had been some things that we've set goals on that I had no idea how it was going to happen. Firewood was the biggest one. Um, I had no idea how that was going to ever happen. Well, it did. It's pretty cool, huh? So it's just you know, and, and uh, you know, like what were the odds that we would that we would we would run into our friends who live a quarter mile away? in another town, end up having dinner with them at night and talk about firewood. Wow. 
you know, he, and he's the one that brought the topic up. I didn't. That's cool. And he had given his wood away two years ago. And the guy never came and did what he said he was going to do. Wow. So, yeah, do what you say you're going to do because, you know, now I got more possibilities from him of uh, getting wood some other time. Awesome. Said, I know that I know you will do what you say. Yeah. Well, we used to work together years ago. I mean, years ago. Wow. <laughs> Probably 25, 30 years ago, we used to work together. Huh. That's super cool. It's crazy. Well, I hope you keep feeding on that law of attraction, that new aha that you have. Oh, I am. Business is right there. And that's one of the big the big things I'm using with uh, when I meet people on Facebook is that I was talking to a gal last night down in Australia. I asked her about her goal, you know, because she was kind of complaining about her business, how it's not working for her and stuff. And I said, well, are you doing this? And she goes, well, I used to. And I said, well, why did you stop? <laughs> Are you riding a mouse? I'm doing some of the same things that you're telling me about. It's just by talking to other people. It's like, okay, wait a minute now. You're not doing it yourself, so back up and do it yourself. Send them my way. I want a client in Australia, Tom. <laughs> That's awesome. You may not like your hours. <laughs> That's okay. I, I keep saying I want a bunch of East Coast people so that I can get up and work at 6 a.m. before my kids get up. Except uh -huh. my son was at swim. At, I took him to swim at 5 a.m. this morning. But um, so, yeah, no. I, I, so have you written that down? Uh, no, I need to, don't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On a whole group of East Coasters. All right. So cool. Well, Tom, I'm very, very excited for you. Are you at all interested in the upcoming business, uh, the team building challenge? I am, but I'm going to have to hold off. Okay. All right, no problem. So, Jen, what have you taken away from this, or what questions do you have? Well, Tom, I'm, by the way, I'm very proud of you. While you're following up on our goals, you're going to be a great team leader. Keep going. You're going to get some of those team members. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You bet. Okay, Jen, go ahead. Um, um, I picked up a lot. I think, I think some of it was just stuff that I already knew, but just, like, setting goals and being consistent. Um, I love the, the asking, how comfortable are you? I think that's, that's awesome. Um, and asking myself that same question. Mm, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Which isn't always easy, but, mm -hmm. um, but it helps. And then, um, I, I love the asking three questions. I'm still working on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm mentally telling myself to ask three questions. So good. I think that's huge. I think it's really huge. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, all of you are a delight. Thank you so much for being with me these last 12 weeks. It's been amazing to watch each of you grow and make those changes. And we'll be talking more, Jen. Okay. Awesome. You and Elizabeth have the goals for building those teams, and you guys are doing awesome things. So please tell Elizabeth we're saying a little prayer for her. I will. Not believe she's throwing up after she. I was so worried when I saw that she was up with us. I'm like, oh, you cannot catch this. Oh shoot. Bad. Yeah. But. It's hard to say no to yourself when your kids are hurt. Well, yeah. Even though you and know being a mom, possible. it's hard to say no to anything. Yeah. Oh goodness. So I gave right. her a good a good little scolding that night. <laughs> oh, that's her heart. I know she said she'd let her mom sleep, and I'm like, no, that's why your mom's there. But I'm like, okay, that's the choice she made. There's no point in going backwards. Yeah. So oh, bless her heart. Okay. Well, I'll be saying it for her. So okay. okay. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Hope you have a fabulous, fabulous day. Tom, keep in touch. I'll be still well, doing free classes. I need to get those posted for what's coming up, and we'll be doing some good things, okay? Um, I actually, I'll connect with you later. Um, there's something that I've been learning about that may be of interest to you. I don't know. Okay. Um, do you have any digital um, business programs that you do that you, get, that, you, that you sell? Yeah, my whole goal is this be all recorded and it 
able to just buy it and do it on their own by February 1st. Okay, I will be in touch with you then because I've I've got involved in another business program that um, is huge. And believe it or not, it's